Hey y'all, thanks, thanks for coming by five years late, right? Today I wanted to jump into not the topic of how to play an instrument, but actually more of how to pick an instrument, right? So I think I talk about, you know, a lot of how to put instruments together, how to get the first sound on them, what are the first five notes, you know, and all that kind of stuff a lot. But there's been kind of this block in my mind um, you know, that I haven't really want, I've just been continuously coming back to this idea of, all right, I need to help people pick an instrument, right? Because in the end, I get kind of frustrated with the idea that, you know, people want to play, you know, there are, you know, millions of people out there and so many of them can only think of, you know, three different instruments, right? And so, but there's a lot more of them out there today. So, you know, today that's the big thing. We're going to be taking a look at what instruments are out there and how do you pick which instrument you're gonna play, right? So, you know, the first two things, right, you gotta kinda of think of, right? Well, you know, depending on who you are in this video watching, right? Are you an adult or someone who is independent who is trying to pick an instrument for themselves to play? Or are you a child slash a parent, you know, who, or maybe a parent of a child who is trying to help pick an instrument for that child, right? Those are the two main things that we're gonna be looking at today. All right, now in those two categories, right? The, the way you answer the question of what instrument am I going to play ends up coming down to pretty much the same thing, right? But, you know, the process of how you get there might be a little bit different and we'll kind of touch on that a little bit later in the end, right? But in the end, it comes down to, do I like the sound of the instrument, right? Now, a lot of people really only think about three of them, right? Which is guitar, piano, and drum set. Now, and I say specifically drum set, not drums, because that is such a broad category of instrument, right? Drum set is collectively really like one instrument, even though you have a bunch of pieces within that one thing, right? But drums, right, is any kind of shell type creature, right, that has some kind of resonating head on top that you hit, whether that be with your hands or your stick, right? So we don't even want to see drums, drum set, because that is a collective type of all these things being brought together in one area, right? Now. Those are the main three that most people think about, right? But it's you know sad to, to see that because that's really not all there is, right? And you really, if you are playing one of those three instruments and you get to a point where your skill level is really not increasing and you really don't know why, you're not moving along with, you know, with whatever it is that you're looking at, you, you kind of have to, or you know, maybe you're not picking it up very often, right? And you're not getting very far. So you, you have to ask yourself, why? Why is it that I'm not getting very far, right? And you know, the why is really, do I enjoy the sound of this instrument? And if you don't, then you might need to consider going ahead and switching, right? Now I'm leaving kind of vocals out of the discussion for today because that really comes down to this, the, the, the question of, hey, dude, do I want to sing or I don't, right? And if you happen to like singing, then great. You know, there's, you know, vocals is, you know, do your thing, right? For, you know, you can't choose uh, any other part of vocals. You can choose styles, really. But I mean, your voice type is your voice type and I'm not gonna even get into that. I've been trained in vocals, but I'm an instrumentalist first and foremost. All right, and now to pick an instrument, you have to first know which ones are out there, really. And so let's kind of break that up by categories, right? Now, these categories of instruments are broken up by how they produce sound, right? So you have percussion, you have woodwinds, you have brass, and you have strings, right? Now, going from the top here, percussion is any instrument that produces sound by you hitting something, right? So whether that be a bar or that be, you know, so like a marimba bar, right? Or uh, whether it be a drum head and you hit that with your hand or a stick and it produces sound in some way like that or a cymbal, you hit it with a stick, that's all percussion, right? Strings, uh, well, you know, it's very intuitive there, you know, it is a string, right? That is vibrating and therefore producing a pitch. And it's usually some set length of string that you can change by putting fingers down, you know, or while well, in the case of piano, you can't change the length of the string, but you have a million sets of strings, right? Within strings, there's kind of two minor categories. There's kind of like plucked instruments or bowed instruments, right? Now picked, in, picked instruments, you know, has a couple more like subcategories in it, kind of depending on uh, instruments and from around the world, but those are the two main ones. 
brass is really straightforward, right? You'll have a mouthpiece and the mouthpiece, you'll put your put it on your lips and you will buzz into the mouthpiece and that is how it produces sound. If it does that, it's considered a brass instrument, right? Now we go over into woodwinds. Woodwinds is kind of funny. Most of them, 99% of them, right? Produce sound by you attaching a reed which is a thin piece of some type of wood, usually reed, <laughs> to the instrument, and it has moisture in it, and you blow through it, and it makes the reed vibrate. You're not vibrating, the reed is vibrating, and that's really what creates pitch for the sound, right? Now, the only instrument in that category that technically doesn't fit that description is flute, flute and piccolo. Flute and piccolo both are considered woodwind instruments, but they don't generate sound with a reed. However, things like clarinet, saxophone, those are all reed instruments. All right, so the first of those categories, let's go ahead and jump into woodwinds, right? Now, woodwinds is a broad category, right? And then a couple of these instruments that I'm going to list off have, are also kind of like subcategories underneath that instrument, right? So, for example, you have clarinet, and I'm going to go ahead and refer to my list here, right? You've got clarinet, saxophone, oboe, bassoon, English horn, flute, piccolo, right? And those are just a couple, right? But there are variations of each of those instruments under their own categories. So for example, let's just go saxophone, because that's the first biggest one that has a million options underneath it, right? The different types of saxophone are labeled based on their voice type, voice type usually following, you know, actually human voice types, right? In in terms of high to low pitch, right? So you go from the top and you have soprano, alto, tenor, bass, usually, right? So, and then in saxophone world, you have soprano sax, alto sax, tenor sax, and you actually have a couple of interesting ones in the middle. You have berry sax, right? And you also have the option for like a bass or a contrabass saxophone, right? So, but that's just one type of woodwind instrument. And then you end up having, you know, all of these like six other types of saxophones underneath that category, right? So there's already a bunch more there, just in that one instrument type, than there were in the original three, right? So, you know, and then we talk about clarinet. Clarinet, you have you have a regular clarinet, which is kind of like, an, and then you have, uh, I've heard also of altos clarinet, and then you have a, actually like an E-flat clarinet, which is higher in pitch than a regular clarinet, and you also have a bass and a contrabass clarinet, so there you have like another five types just within clarinet, right? You do have oboe. Oboe is kind of a fun one. So oboe and bassoon are double reed instruments, which means that you literally have two reeds that are tied together and they're strung together and they're on the instrument, right? Now of oboe, oboe and English horn are two, they're technically the same instrument. English horn is just a fifth higher, right? Than oboe is written. Bassoon is the low of the double reeds and there's also a contrabass bassoon, which by the way is fun as heck. Like a contrabass, it's like, talk about like making your innards shake, right? From playing an instrument, that's really cool stuff, right? So, and you know, that's just within the woodwind category and there are more. So the next category here that we're taking a look at is strings, of course, right? Now you have a couple subcategories in that. We talked about picked instruments versus bowed instruments, right? Those are the two kind of main ones, right? And there's different kinds of picks, different fingering styles and things like that you might do for all those instruments, right? But we're not going to get into all that today. That's a whole other video, honestly, right? So, but in the end, you know, you have all your orchestral ones, right? So you have violin and you've got viola and you've got cello and then you've got bass, right? Double bass specifically, also known as upright bass, right? Now, if you kind of go a little bit further into the rest of those string instruments, then you do actually have like, you know, regular guitar, acoustic and electric, and then you do have, you know, bass, the kind that's held on a strap that's also electric, right? Um, you know, but that's not the end of it, right? There's a lot more string instruments that are from different kind of cultures around the world that, you know, you might find interesting and fascinating and, and say to yourself, wow, that's just a cool sound. And it doesn't matter if it's from a culture that's familiar to you. You know, the, th the in the end, if you like the sound of it, you should probably go ahead and take a look at it, right? So some of these other string instruments, let, let's take a look at them here. So I've got, uh, just from the ones that I could remember off the top of my head, right? We also have the guitaron, which is like a very large guitar that's bass oriented, right? But it still has six strings like a regular guitar. You also have things like hammered dulcimer, which could technically become be a percussion instrument and a string instrument, but hammered dulcimer, that's a really cool one. Pipa, harp, or biwa, right? 
All these pipa is, to my understanding, is a Chinese instrument. I played a really cool duet with someone. I was playing marimba and they played pipa and I did that in college. That's a really cool instrument, right? Biwa, I've never had a chance to play with someone who's playing that, but man, it's a, it's a pretty fun one. All right, now in this section, I'm gonna kind of lump brass and percussion together a little bit because, you know, Brass has a lot of instruments within it, but there's not a lot of like subcategories that kind of you know go along with that, right? It's not the kind of thing where you either have bowed instruments or picked instruments, right? In the end, it, you know, they all produce sound the same way, and so there is kind of a, a slight limit, right, to how many variations within that one field you can have, right? And in percussion, uh, you know, there's a couple of instruments that fit into separate categories there, and in the end, if you learn how to play one of the instruments in that subcategory, you're gonna learn to play all of the all of the rest of the instruments that are within that other subcategory, right? So let's go through brass real quick. So in brass, just going down from from highest pitch down to lowest pitch, right? The general categories, right? You have trumpet, and within that trumpet category, you also have cornet, right? Which is Essentially the same as a trumpet, more of a rounder sound. It comes down to cylindrical versus conical instruments, right? But in terms of the pitches you can get out of them, they're pretty much the same, right? Going down a little bit further than that, then you have trombone, right? Now, you can have a trombone, you can also have a tenor trombone, you can also have a bass trombone, right? And as those go down, you're also getting further down in sound, okay? So those are a couple different types of trombone. Now you also have, for example, euphonium and baritone, right? Now that's those two, is there's a common misconception about those instruments, right? They're kind of similar to trumpet and cornet in the fact that trumpet and, uh, sorry, euphonium and baritone, right, is a cylindrical versus conical type um, thing with the, with the tubing of the instrument, right? It comes down to whether or not the tubing is about the same width all the way down until a certain point toward the bell, or if it kind of gets wider faster and starts to get really wide all the way before the bell of the instrument. That's pretty much the difference between the two. <laughs> Now going down further, then you have, you know, tuba at that point, right? And there are, of course, different versions of tuba, right? You have a B flat tuba, a C tuba, or you have an E flat tuba, you know, and then there's also French horn, right? And in French horn, we're not even gonna get into that one because, you know, the standard horn, standard French horn is in F, but usually uh, you don't have like a single horn in B flat, you have a double horn, which means that there's two sets of tubing on the same instrument, one in F and one in B flat, and you press a trigger to switch between the two. So instead of separate instruments right there, you just kind of put them back to put them together. And if you have a really interesting one, a descant horn, then you actually have, you know, one, you have a set of tubing in B flat, one, sorry, one in F, one in B flat, and then you might also have one in E flat, which gets really kind of interesting. There's a lot of variation within, uh, within the French horn world, right? Now, that's pretty much mostly all I know for the brass world. Brass is really fun, right? Now, but let's get into percussion, right? Now I gotta kinda look at my list here to make sure I don't leave any out here too much, right? But there's a whole globe worth of instruments right there, right? So, you know, we're going from orchestral side, right? We got xylophone, vibraphone, marimba, right? And glockenspiel. Emphasis on the marimba. It's not marumba, it's marimba, right? There's a huge thing there, okay? Now, glockenspiel and chimes, right? And then all of those are considered mallet instruments in percussion world and they all fit within the same category right if you can read the music for one of them then you can actually play all of them you just use different mallets on all of them now marimba is actually very similar in terms of piano to how you read music it actually plays music on grand staff just the same way piano does right so you essentially have a right hand and a left hand part a lot of times you play it with four mallets in total right so two mallets in the left hand and two mallets in the right hand right you can check out one of my other videos to see how that kind of works a little bit later on <laughs> Now, but within furthering down the world, you also have timpani, right? Which is their massive copper kettles with pedals that change the pitch, right? Um, and that's kind of the last like orchestral one right there. And I'm not even getting into all the small stuff you might find in that world, you know, like bass drum snare. You're not gonna learn to only play bass drum in the percussion world. That's just, that's not how that's gonna work. So I'm not gonna even talk about it. Now then, you know, in terms of other things, you got gamelan. Gamelan are mallet instruments that are from, you know, other parts of the world. And usually in smaller sets of notes, different kind of tuning processes, right? But that's another really fun one. That's an entire subcategory. Check out gamelan, right, at some point. And you got djembe, darbuka, bongos, congas, and seriously, like a million more, right? Keep in mind that the xylophone and glockenspiel, they're not children's instruments, right? There are versions of them that are 
made to be toys, right? But just like any kind of toy, it's based on kind of a real world professional item, right? So, you know, in in reality, xylophone and glockenspiel, there are professional, you know, uh, xylophones and glockenspiels that sound amazing and professional people that play them as well. So don't don't write off those two and think to yourself, oh, that's just, you know, a toy or anything like that because well, there are some really crazy people playing those things too. All right, for this next part, we have to kind of, you know, those are mostly, you know, the instruments that are like readily available in, in the Western world, right? There are plenty more of them and Man, believe me, feel free to go check all of those out because there's a lot more out there than I think most people think and even even know exist, right? Um, plenty of really cool cultural instruments, you know, I know there are some, some lap-oriented string instruments that uh, you play with your fingertips, I've seen plenty of those. Man, that's, that's all really cool stuff, right? But now we kind of have to get into the category of the person. Right, and now this is kind of you need to be able to look inward right, at yourself and have a little bit of you know uh, it's you know I could say almost like emotional intelligence, right? Or but no, that's really probably more like an understanding of, of oneself, right? There are two categories of people, right? When you're looking at getting into music or really honestly any hobby, <laughs> in the end, right? Now the question is, right? Are you playing this instrument because you want to be cool? Or are you because are you wanting to play this instrument because you think that that instrument is really cool, right? Or that you know because you just love music in general, right? And you need to be really honest with yourself when it comes to that question, because if you're the kind of person that's gonna walk into the store and you're gonna go buy a guitar because you're like, man, I just want to go ahead and play this thing and I want to get chicks and blah blah blah, you know, then. Let's be honest, your superficial level of interest is probably as far as you will get into the actual instrument. Are you ever gonna probably shred and sound really awesome on whatever instrument it is that you're looking at? Probably not, right? So you should probably, you know, think about that, right? Now, if you wanna pick up an instrument because you've heard some music from it, or a song, or a piece, whatever you wanna call it, if you've heard something from an instrument and you think that instrument sounds really cool that instrument sounds great and you've kind of fallen in love with that sound that's what you really want to be paying attention for all right now the next part right we're actually getting down to kind of the nitty-gritty where we're talking about kind of the two different you know situations that we mentioned in the beginning right are you the child slash the parent helping the child picking an instrument or are you an adult slash you know a person who's just picking an instrument for yourself maybe who's like you know I don't know, not, not a kid. Well, honestly, just say anything that's not a kid, right? If you're on that second side and you're just an adult, right, and you're getting kind of just into a hobby, right, then it, it's, you know, pretty straightforward, right? What you want to do, take some of the instruments that I've listed here, and I might put them down in the description to kind of help you out, give you something to kind of work off of, right? What you want to do at that point is you want to search out recordings that are of the highest quality possible for those instruments, right? Whatever they might be in, right? You want to listen, listen to as many possible instruments as, as you can, right? Because like we've been saying this whole time, it comes down to whether or not you enjoy the sound of the instrument, right? Human nature is if you don't like the sound of the thing that you're playing, you will put it down and you will not pick it back up. Sorry, that's just, that's the way that is, right? So you have to absolutely love the way this thing sounds, okay? So, I mean, if you play guitar and you hate the sound of plucking it and then, you know, the pick coming in contact with the string and kind of, you know, if you don't like the timbre of those high strings and like the sound of a pick coming in contact with the string, if you don't like that sound at all, you probably shouldn't be playing guitar, right? Also, I don't know, if drums are too loud for you, right? Because you can't go and join a rock band and play quiet, right? You, you just can't. You're too timid. You can't do that. You have to be present and you have to be driving, right? So if you don't really like exceptionally loud instruments and you're more of a meditative kind of person, you probably shouldn't be looking at doing drums. And if you are, maybe go ahead and listen to a couple other things and try some things out, okay? Now, that's the adult side, right? Now, on the child side, it's a little bit hard, right? Because honestly, if you're a parent, right, and you have a kid and they, they say, hey, they want to play an instrument, right? Assuming they haven't already said, hey, I want to play piano or something along those lines, right? Assuming they haven't done that yet. 
and they just want to play an instrument, or maybe you want to get them into an instrument just so they can try it and see if it's something that they're interested in, right? One of the worst things you can possibly do, right, and this is coming from a music educator, right, and who's worked in schools, right? I've directed ensembles and I've, you know, worked in schools for years, right? And now I've kind of taken that out into the private world. The worst thing you could do is shove your own desires, you know, or interests onto your kid, right? So if you're the kind of person that's like, oh man, I always wanted to play trumpet, don't even mention that to your kid. Just don't, right? Because you want them to form as organic of an in, you know, interest in whatever instrument they might go toward as possible, right? You have to do the same thing with the kid that you would do with yourself. You, they need to listen to as many different instruments that exist out there as, as humanly possible. And there's a little bit more observation that kind of has to be done there, right? Because obviously you're not in their head. You have to observe and you have to watch for interest and you have to ask questions, right? You can do that by, you know, listening to sound files in the car, just kind of playing them there as you're like driving places on the way to school or something like that. You can just put them on the background at home and just see if there's any kind of response to it. Maybe you play a sound file and then they ask you about it, right? That'd be kind of cool. Now, you can also just sit down and say, hey, you know, I was thinking maybe we could get you like into playing some type of instrument and like let's sit down and listen to some together and see if there are any of them that you like the sound of, right? Now, that's what you want to do, okay? You don't show them what any of the instruments look like. Because if you play some of these sound files and they say something sounds really cool, then that's that's perfect, that's what you want, right? But if you show them just pictures of instruments, they're just gonna point at the one, you know, in all likelihood, they're gonna point at the one that they recognize, which, you know, because of popular culture and media, right, you're gonna see is gonna be vocals, piano, guitar, or drums, right? Those are the four that everyone knows, and so they're just gonna point to one of the ones that they recognize, right? If they happen to be interested in any regular, or like any other instruments, right, then it still will come down to just whichever one they recognize, right? In the end, they need to like the sound. They need to be interested in what the thing sounds like. Otherwise, even more so for a child, right? If you think an adult is gonna drop an instrument because they're not interested in the way it sounds or they hate it, a kid is gonna do it even faster, right? you will have to fight tooth and nail to get them to play anything for even 15 to 20 minutes every single day, right? And you will not make progress on an instrument and get any better if you aren't putting in at least 30 minutes a day after the first like two week period, right? So it, it comes down to time. And if you don't like the way your instrument sounds, then you're not gonna pick it up and you're not gonna put in that time. And that is, that's the simple thing about it, right? So you have to have the kid listen to the sound. You have to kind of go through that process and figure it out with them, right? Now, wouldn't it be kind of cool if you did that and then you actually end up, yeah, as the parent, listening to some of these instruments and say, oh wow, that sounds really cool. Maybe I want to play one of these instruments too. That'd be really fun. All right, now the next little bit we have to kind of touch on briefly, right, is, you know, kind of, I hate to say it, but gender kind of plays you know, a little bit of role into it as well. And I don't mean the fact that the kid, uh, well, actually, no, sometimes the kid might as well, kind of like there might be a problem there, right? But don't restrict your child's instrument choosing process because of whether they're male or female or anything like that, right? This was a huge problem years ago in the music industry, right? In well, in band programs, in high school and middle school, string programs, right? You end up having kind of this like thought that, oh, like that's a boy's instrument or that's a girl's instrument or something like that. And so then you end up having a large amount of people in those instrument categories of one gender, not necessarily because there weren't people of the other gender that wanted to play the instrument, but because they were kind of like forced out of it, right? Or their parents kind of like pushed them towards one or the other based on what they thought about it, right? So. You know, one of the huge things that happens, and I've seen this in band programs, is parents come in and they say, oh, I want my daughter to play flute. You need to back up a little bit, right? If you're a parent that is thinking to yourself, oh, I'd really like my daughter to play flute. You need to check out there for a second and you need to kind of ask yourself why, 
right? If you're thinking to yourself, oh, well, flute's a nice girl instrument, right? Or, or even actually, if you actually kind of did get a little bit technical with that analysis and you thought to yourself, oh, tuba is a huge instrument. My daughter that's only 5'1 can't possibly play tuba. Well, actually, you're just wrong right there because flute and tuba actually require a very similar amount of air, right? Only Probably about 75% of the air that's used to play flute is wasted flying over the top of the instrument and doesn't even go into it. So you actually need a very, you need a pretty good lung capacity to be able to play flute first and foremost, or you need very, very efficient air supply, right? And the same thing kind of goes for tuba. You need either a very large amount of air capacity or you need efficiency. And honestly, and you know, most of the time you kind of want a little bit of both, right? So, but there's really no reason specific why like a girl can't play tuba or can't play trombone or can't play trumpet right all these brass instruments you know are you know a very heavily male dominated instrument right and there's really no specific reason as to why because man I have seen some really really awesome female brass players right better musicians than me just by like a long shot and they just kick ass you know absolutely kick butt Right, so you know, don't think that you know just because you're a girl or your daughter, you know, you, that they should like play flute or like a violin or something like that. Right, it still comes down to in the end, do they like the sound of the instrument? If they don't, they're gonna drop it, no matter what the heck you say, right? Or you'll tell them to go and take these lessons. But I've seen lessons where a student just goes in there and sits, and then like the teacher plays for 30 minutes, and the student like does nothing because they just don't want to be there, right? If you don't want to pay for lessons where nothing is happening, I suggest you probably, you know, think more about what your you know, kid wants to play, right? Now, on the other side is exactly the same thing, right? Just because it's a boy doesn't mean that they should be doing percussion, right? Or that they should be doing brass and playing trumpet or something along those lines. I have seen plenty of men play flute and do very, very well at that, or play violin and do very, very well at that, right? It goes both ways, okay? In, in the end, if the person, the kid, the adult, student, whatever, if they like the sound of the instrument, they will want to put time into it and they will want to play it. Music is always first a hobby and then it becomes kind of more like a lifestyle. And then you know, it can become a profession, but then at that point it's more a part of you. And if you don't like the instrument that, you know, you know, that you've picked, it won't get past hobby phase and actually you'll probably just drop the hobby and never be interested in music really ever again. All right, with that, you know, thanks for coming by and hanging out with five years late. I hope this video helped you pick an instrument, right? If you have managed to pick an instrument at this point, go ahead and check out some of my, my other videos in the uh, first 30 minutes series where we go over all the basic stuff that has to do with the instrument. So opening the case, right? You, that's funny, but you know, hey, there's a right and a wrong way to open a case, right? Putting the instrument together, getting your first sound out of the instrument, sometimes the first five notes and all that stuff, right? So go over and, you know, check out some of those videos, you know? And uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.